don't know about you guys, but I'm having the time of my life on Blackout. I'm having so much fun with this here, and having played a ton of time already in the game, there's a bunch of things that I would love to see adjusted, and, well, Treyarch's already on the ball here, because as of yesterday, as of late last night, we actually got a day one update for things that were changing today, Tuesday, on technically day two of the PlayStation 4 beta. So, of course, as of this video, we're gonna be detailing what all changed here with this, some things that they wanted to also mention, and also I want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up for some things that I think will be adjusted and I'd love to see adjusted as well, but we'll see if that actually happens in time. But that said, we're going to be taking a look at these changes here, so let's just jump right into it. The first and biggest thing to note here is that this is not going to be the only update we end up seeing. Obviously, we saw a quick little fix with some of these issues already just in day one into day two, so with an entire week still ahead of us, we're going to be getting a lot more updates. So we might keep you guys updated here at this or do maybe a larger video towards the end of the week or whenever it may be, but regardless, expect a few more playlist updates and hot fixes to end up changing out some things here with this. But that said, we had a handful of changes up on deck, and the first one is one you may notice immediately, and you don't even need to go into a game to check this one out. That being the max player count was actually increased. It is now 88 players instead of 80. This is something that Treyarch stated they were open to changing the max player count based off of beta feedback, but we never really anticipated a change this early on, let alone in the beta at all. Personally, I was expecting we'd see 80 the entire time, and then after that, maybe say at launch, we see 90 or 100 or maybe 115 as David Vonderhaar hinted in an interview with Game Informer, but we ended up seeing an initial day one update that granted 88 players instead of just 80, and this is honestly, I think, fantastic, and in terms of just how this plays, it really does help the flow of the game a little bit. I think there can even be room for more players added in as well. With 80 players, it was a great number, of course. Early game was relatively manageable, but late game, there were a lot of times where we were like, I wonder where anybody is, and you'd come across engagements where you wouldn't see anybody for five minutes or so. But while with an increase in players, the early game might be a little more hectic, it definitely evens out in the long run, and therefore I think it makes it a lot more fast paced and a lot more fun to play around with just in that essence of always keeping you in the action. So as for that, we have the player count increased to 88. As for if we'll see another increase to the player count, I'm not entirely sure, but if we've seen one this early on, Who's to say we won't see another one in two, three, four days or so leading into the final half of what we see for the beta? We're still so early on. We're only in day two right now. So there's a lot of time for these adjustments to be made. So maybe we end up seeing 96, maybe 100, and we'll see where that goes from there. That said, right now, there already has been an increase to 88 players. The second biggest change is that to item pickup. And this is something that I'm totally all for. If you guys jumped in on the beta yesterday, you noticed that it might have taken a little bit of time for you to get any items in your inventory. You'd had to hold down a square to end up picking something up. So in that sense, it did take a little bit longer than just say running over it or just tapping. Well, as of today, there was an update that ended up cutting that time relatively in half. I don't have the specific numbers for the timing of each, but it was something that is much noticeable, but it isn't as quick as picking it up by just tapping. And the design intent behind this, why you have to hold it in a little bit, is simply so you don't have to reload and accidentally pick something up in a gunfight that may be a crucial point in the game. So in that sense, I totally understand, but I think it might even be a decent point now where it's at, where it's a sort of balance between holding it in very long and also just tapping. So right now it's about cut in half. You'll definitely notice that if you played yesterday compared to today. After that, it deals a little bit with your inventory, the next change that they made, that more so dealing with the quick menu for the inventory, where you can hit up on your D-pad and access some of your lethals, some of your consumable perks, and then also your healing. With this, it would stay open a little bit longer, but today they ended up adjusting it to the point of, if you bring it open, but then stay AFK and don't navigate in that menu at all, after five seconds, it will automatically close, which is of course a nice little feature here. It does get in the way if you're in an engagement and need to bring it up very quick and say, don't necessarily get out of it quick enough. So being AFK or idle in that where you don't hit your D-pad to select anything out of that for five seconds is a nice little addition that'll just go away by itself. So while a more minor change here with the game, something that was of course a nice little update and feature that was added in to the quick menu selection. The final thing that was actually changed out was that of the sensor dart. The sensor dart yesterday actually lasted quite a long time, but today they ended up changing it so that it would only have a duration of two minutes. So you are a little more limited than that of what it was yesterday. The sensor dart 
is rather powerful whenever you take a look at it because normally you don't see anything like a UAV in the air, so you don't have a relative general idea unless you've seen somebody where they are exactly. But with the sensor dart, obviously that gives away their position. It doesn't give you the story they're on, but it gives you the area that they're in. So still enough of an advantage that it can give somebody the swing in a gunfight. But those were the changes, but additionally they also mentioned two key talking points they're going to take a look at and evaluate as the week goes on. So maybe we see some changes, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday, whenever it may be, but it's definitely something they're aware of and they will look to adjust accordingly if it does need adjusted. Those being firstly, one, armor. So for this one, I'm all for the exploration of a change or a fix or some sort of update to how armor works in Blackout. Level one and level two are relatively tame. They are, of course, more readily accessible on the map and do offer some key sponging in gunfights that could save your life here and there. But when you get to level three, that's just when it gets to be something of nightmares. When you end up getting a level three, I haven't seen the actual statistical breakdown, but it seems like there's anywhere from six to 10 shots that are sponged before any damage is dealt to the actual player. Now, when that happens, of course, if you're in a one-on-one -on -one gunfight or something like that, that is obviously life and death by far because anywhere else, even with a level one or a level two, six to 10 shots is easily a kill. So when it sponges that much, well, that's almost like you're living two to three times more through a gunfight than you maybe should. Obviously, yes, headshots are key, and headshots do a little more damage. The helmet is knocked off with level three, but at range with the recoil, it can be really tough to manage that sometimes, or if you're close quarters, sometimes you just have a little bit of a kick or spray that doesn't hit how you want. I know that when you get to say final 15 or 10, you're very well set if you have a level three armor equipped, and if you have that plus a trauma kit, which gives you 200 HP off the bat, Plus, if you have a nine bang, well, then you're just good to go. You can just pretty much take the W at that point. So as for what remedies or changes may be made to armor, that's for time to tell, of course. We don't have any specific details, but Treyarch knows that it's a little unbalanced at times, and they're looking to see if there's something that can be easily implemented to remedy that. So I'm all for that. Looking forward to seeing what may come of that discussion here within the next couple of days. But the next thing that they mentioned was that of friendly fire or team killing. Now, as it stands right now, I personally don't have much of an experience with this, save for a few times where my teammates have jumped in front of my bullets, but friendly fire, of course, is something that if you end up going into solo squads, duo squads, or if you have even three people in your filling, which is on automatically, you could have that one guy that's just a massive troll, somebody that is trying to grief the entire game, so he just continuously will team kill you. And so that's something that, of course, will happen, and with friendly fire enabled by default, you're gonna have those situations, and so Treyarch is looking to see how much of an issue this is, if there's something that they can end up doing to remedy this once it actually happens, so if somebody team kills, they can't loot the body, or if there's a penalty for how many times somebody team kills, who knows what it might actually result in, but it is something that right now they're looking at avenues to explore in the next couple of days with the beta, and of course, at the full launch as well. It might go the route of, say, CSGO, where if your team kills so many times, you're kicked out and maybe put on a probation, whatever it may be, we're not entirely sure, but they're open to discussing this with the community. So, of course, if you guys have any thoughts on this, feel free to drop them down there in the comment section down below. Who knows? Some people may watch this and it might spur the next change for Friendly Fire. Now, it's all well and dandy that we've seen a bunch of updates already just a day and a half into the game, but some things that I want to talk about here with you guys and hopefully we can see adjusted and maybe we can work together as a community to get these at the forefront of the discussion. First things first, I'd love to see the nine banks change because these are flashes on steroids. You're immobilized, you're blinded, and you can't do anything for a good five, six seconds if cooked properly. If you end up getting a hit marker with this and the player's anywhere in your relative vicinity, it's pretty much a free kill at that point. So I'd love to see some sort of counter here with this, maybe a less effectiveness on the nine bang itself in blackout, but I ended up even losing a game because some guy had a level three armor, a trauma kit, and then also a nine bang. So it was something that hit home pretty hard with this, but the nine bang is something that I feel like it's just a little too overpowered at this point. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you guys disagree. Another thing that I'd like to see is a little bit of a pickup view change. We talked about how the item pickup speed was already adjusted, but my problem wasn't ever really with the speed that it was able to be acquired. My thing was more so you have to look down at every single item and take your eyes off the game in front of you. And so that could be life or death at some points, especially early game. So with that said, you have in every Call of Duty game the ability to look down range, but still see an icon pop up up saying hold square to pick up a certain weapon or something like that. 
I'd love to see that same sort of mechanic implemented where you can still walk over it, but it'll give you the prompt to pick it up. You don't have to look directly at the item. I think that will, of course, increase the speed of play, not only to keep going and looting, but also it will allow for more awareness when it actually comes down to the gameplay. And the final thing I want to mention deals with the hit boxes and hit detection. This is relatively a general blanket statement that we can pretty much make it any year's Call of Duty or any game that has online connectivity. But one thing that I did notice was that there were seemingly invisible barriers in some points. Yesterday during a stream that we did all day, there were two circumstances that really stand out to me. One, I was in the middle of the desert and I wasn't say head glitching, but it was probably the barrier ended around my character's mid stomach. So I was very vulnerable, but I also had a lot of view of the area around me. Some player came up to me and I was shooting at them, but I was getting blocked by the rocks below me, even though my view was perfectly crystal clear. Another example of this was whenever I encountered a player that was just sitting on the back of an ATV. Whenever I took a shot from the side, it was almost like an invisible wall was there in front of him, but whenever I turned and pivoted and took shots from his perspective, where I was in his POV, that's whenever I ended up getting the shots. So there were things that, of course, that didn't really make sense and little errors here and there that would happen. And so therefore, I'd love to see those ironed out. Obviously, within time, they will. It's a big map, so there will be some things that do happen. That And so we have the masses playing on it. Not everybody can scour every inch perfectly and take every scenario imaginable and apply it to each square inch of that map. So that said, I'm expecting those to be changed out, but I'm just putting it out there hoping so. That said, that is the day one update here for Blackout, and of course, we'll keep you guys updated with more things that change and more things that happen within the Blackout map, and as the week goes on, any progression that may happen. So that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything in particular you would like to see changed here with Blackout in Black Ops 4's Battle Royale map? Anything you would like to suggest to Treyarch, to fix, to add in, whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Of course, if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below, and if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Blackout, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, World War 2, all that good stuff. We got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of that interests you, of course, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. I'm super hyped for Blackout, man. I am so excited to make content here for you guys on it. That said, if you guys also want to get connected, Twitter is a great place to do so. Practically live on Twitter. That link is in the description below, as well as Instagram if you guys want to follow on that front also. That said, though, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.